So welcome to another Java program tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be switching IDE. We're going to be switching to the Eclipse IDE which is actually designed for Java. So what it will do is it will let us uh, compile it without having to go into command prompt and enter a bunch of commands. So you literally just press a run button and it will run the command. It will run all the commands for you to compile it and then the commands to run it. And it will also show you things like errors and it will lay that all out properly you will see when we download it so what you want to do is head over to eclipse.org link in the description below uh, then go to downloads and then here you got eclipse ID for Java E developers that should be right on top now here's the thing you got Windows 32 bit and Windows 64 bit you need to pick whichever one you downloaded Java so I remember when right in the first tutorial we downloaded the Java Standard Edition. If you download the 32-bit version, you need to get the 32-bit here. 64-bit version, you got to get the 64-bit here. And obviously if you're on Linux or Mac, select whichever one you want. So I downloaded the 32-bit um, Java. So I'm going to need Windows 32-bit. So just click on that. And then right here, it should have the recommended uh, mirror service for you to download it from. Now, I'm in the United Kingdom, so the recommended one is the UK mirror service. Um, if you're in the US or something, it will show a recommended one for you. And if, if you find a closer one here, use this one. Basically, if you find one closer to you, it will just be a lot faster to download. So once you've got that downloaded, just put it on your desktop and that will create a folder called Eclipse, G, G, Juno, something like that. You want to right click that and press Extract All. Now I changed this to just Eclipse like that and then just hit Extract. I've already extracted it because that took quite a while for me. So in this Eclipse folder here, there's the Extracted folder. Now you may have to go into a folder called Eclipse inside here and then press Eclipse. But for me, because I've extracted it differently, I just have to go straight into that folder and press Eclipse. If that's confused you, just ignore it. Then once you're in that folder, you just want to select this thing that says Eclipse. And it has like a purple ball of white lines going through it. I don't know what it's supposed to be. But just open that. And then you've got splash screen. And then you want to choose where you're going to store your workspace. I am storing my workspace on the desktop. The workspace is basically the folder where you store all of your files. And yeah, it's basically a place to store your Java files. So just press OK. Once you've selected the location, mine's on the desktop. See it here. And then this will just load the workbench. Um, shouldn't say, no, there it is. Uh, let me resize that. There you go. Should be able to see that quite clearly. So here's the Eclipse uh, UI. Now ignore this thing that says Eclipse Java E IDE for web developers. We're not obviously web developers at the moment. We're only doing Java programs. Just ignore that. That's just how the new version of Eclipse is. So this is your actual layout. Now before we go and just uh, mess around with this layout, first we're going to just go into File, New, and then Project. Here we're going to select Java Project, press Next. And in this tutorial I'm going to teach you how to use incrementing, and you'll learn what that is in a minute, so we're going to just type increment. I may move this on to the next tutorial, we'll see. And then just, for, just make sure this is Use an Execution Environment, JRE. And make sure this is selected on the latest one. At the moment, it's 1.7. Press finish. And then we get this thing about perspectives. Perspectives is basically the layout. So here we've got the Project Explorer on the left. We've got outline over here, markers. This will just make it so that it's better. It's a better workflow for coding Java. So we just press yes there. You see it's changed it around now. Now we get problems down here. We don't actually need all this myelin task lists or the outline, so just close those. Leave the problems one and the Java doc and declaration. You can leave all those open. 
and this is how I would work in Java. So here is your project, the increments project. So under SRC, because this is the package that is already created, you can just right click on that, pressing new, and then class. In the future tutorials, I'm not going to be showing you this, so just try and remember how we did this. So basically you go file, new, project, Java project, name it, and then just right click, right click on this SRC, and then do this. What we're going to do is just give it this a name, leave everything the same. We're just going to call this main, or actually no, don't call it main, uh, call this whatever you want. So, uh, what should we call it? Just call it increment. And then hit finish. And that creates this increments.java. And you should remember this from the previous tutorials. This is where we did all the coding. So before we didn't have a package, but ignore all that, all the projects. This is the file that we used to, this .java. So first before we start increments, I'm just going to show you how the whole thing works. Okay, so in here, this is just our class. And we're going to do that public static void main string args thing. So we just type in pub public static void and then main um, and then put the brackets like that. You see how, notice how this curly brackets it automatically ended it for us. That's why um, Eclipse is so useful. So then here what we're going to do is string oops, string square brackets args space. So that's our public static void main thing. And when I start all the, all the next tutorials, this will already be like this. So basically how we were doing the previous ones. And also I already have the, uh, the project and everything sorted. So in here, we're just going to type system dot out oops out dot print ln oh this keyboard and then in here you can do speech marks and then uh hello now instead of having to save this go into command prompt do all of that we can just hit control and s to save and then here you see we've got this run button just press that and down here, this might not look like a console, but it is. This is what you'd see if you were to open this up in a command prompt. So there we go, we didn't have to do any compiling, we just hit the run button. And you see it ran. Um, I'm probably gonna, I'm gonna just going to save incrementing for the next tutorial, since this one's already 8 minutes long. So anyway, thank you for watching this tutorial. Don't forget to comment, rate and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.